Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use loopers in order to present contents in a more customized way. Loopers are placeholders that can be used to duplicate one or more times all controls contained inside the repeatable area. Let's begin by creating a new project and selecting a theme. Let's choose Case System Blue. Choose where to save the project, create a new folder. Here we are going to list contents from a table. Like table controls that present text lines and columns linked to a database, loopers can use various controls and link each control inside a cell to a column in the database table. Create a new form by double clicking the list style. Configure the left arrow to close the form. Delete controls that won't be needed. Add a label for the subtitle above the looper. Name it Countries. Now center it. Rename the labels inside the looper and their text. This one will have the country name. This one the region. Let's resize the label. This will have the population density name. Let's resize it again. Finally, add another label to display the population density value. Name it LVL pop them. Now we need to add the contents that will be presented with the looper. For that, we are going to open a file containing some images and also a database. This file will be available for download. Copy those files to the files to send folder in our project. All the files placed in this folder will be sent automatically to the device's application folder and can be accessible using the P folder keyword. Next, we need to create a database profile. Select SQLite, add a profile name and choose its location. A database name. Now add all the tables and select all the columns. Because the database file will be sent to the device, we can set the application to open this file locally from its own folder. Go to the forms actions, add set db profile parameter. In the new value, add the keyword p folder plus the path where the file is located. Click save. Now open the looper properties and set the number of columns to 1. In the looper content, link controls to tables. Click to add a link and select from the table countries the country name. Select LVL countries as target. Add another link, this time the image column and image item 1 as target. From the table regions, select region name column and LVL region as target. Now, again from the countries table, select population density and select LVL pop them as target. Next, we need to define the relations between the tables. This will be region ID from the table countries to the region ID from the regions. 
Let's open the form properties and edit its actions. Now we need to make the looper refresh its contents when the form opens using the refresh control action. Select the looper and click save. Let's test. Now, to dynamically change some control properties, the looper has an item added event that is triggered whenever an item is added. So, we can use that event to change a label font color. Let's begin by creating an if condition to verify a variable. If the value present in LVL pop them is greater than 100, Search for the set property action. And set the color property of LVL pop them to red. Choose the label control. And choose the property font color. Select the color red. And delete the else statement. Click save. Now let's test. The same result can be obtained without using the item added event and using only SQL Advanced. Let's use Calypso to convert automatically and test the conversion. We can choose the database profile. Let's confirm that it's working. Now we only need to generate in the query an extra table containing the font color values. We then need to go to the looper properties and, in the looper content, add another link with column index 5 to control LVL pop them and set the target property as font color. Now we only need to generate in the query an extra table containing the font color values. Let's arrange the query and make some indentations. And finally add another colon. When population density is greater or equal to 200, then we use the RGB code associated with the color red. Now we can comment the actions in the item other event and test. Next, we are going to show how to create dynamic menus. Dynamic menus can be useful, for instance, when menus need to change according to the user. Let's begin by creating a new form. We can do that by double-clicking in the menu style form. Next, we delete extra controls in the looper. Change the label title to dynamic menu. Adjust the label size. Delete other controls. And copy the exit button from previous form. Now in the looper content settings, create a link
and in the target select the label and the hidden value property. The hidden value is a property that can be manipulated in controls and is hidden from the user. Here it will be used to simplify the selection process. Next, we create another link to control the label's text. Now, in the form actions, we need to add a looper line for each menu item that we want to create. This could also be done by loading from another table, like in the previous example, but here we are going to manually add lines. Let's add a line with the looper add line action. In the hidden value, enter 1, and in the value, enter list view countries. Now we need to define the action to be performed when a menu entry is clicked. In the looper actions, we add get property action to get the hidden value to a temporary variable. and use an if statement to show a form according to the value of the variable. Now, in order to test, we need to set menu as the first form. Also, to be able to click anywhere in the looper, we need to add the execute event to any control inside the looper in order to also show the desired form. In the label action, add the execute event of the looper click. Let's test. Now let's create a scrollable area. This can be created using a looper anchored between controls that need to be always visible. Let's create a new form by double clicking the data view. In order to help the creation, we can use a similar form. Now let's remove the controls in the extra form in order to place a looper there. Now let's add a looper and resize it to the form dimensions. Resize the cell area in order to allow the desired contents to be placed there. Let's do some resizing to the top images. Now we need to select all the controls except the one in the top bar of the form and copy them to the auxiliary form. Now that they are in the other form, after we do some repositioning, they will be automatically placed inside the looper. Now we can delete the copied controls from the form. Let's resize the looper and copy it to the destination form. We can now delete the auxiliary form.
In order to display the looper contents, we need to use the looper add line action. And to make the cell active, we need to add the set selection. Now, in the menu form, let's add a line to show another entry. This will have the hidden value too. and scrollable area as the text. In the looper menu, we also need to set the looper click action to show the new form. This can be done by copying the if statement and converting it to an else if. We then need to verify if the hidden value is two and show the data view form. Now we can disable the vertical scroll and reduce the looper dimensions. Let's copy the top shape to the bottom. Now let's test. Thank you for watching. For more information and additional contents, please visit Calypso website.